Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Don O'Dell's Legends. My name is Art Tipaldi. I'm the editor of Blues Review Magazine, the largest blues magazine in the world. Now, the performers we have tonight who are going to be uh, on the set may not be household headliner names if you're a fan of music, but if you've been a fan of music for the last 40 or 50 years, you probably have records with songs they've written on them. You probably have gone to shows where they've been in the band backing the headliner. And you probably have record albums and CDs that these two men have produced. Tonight we're pleased to welcome multi-instrumentalist Jeff Pivar and really a living legend in music, Danny Korchmar. Hello. Hey. Nice to be here. Nice to be here, guys. Pleasure now, tonight you guys are doing a, a, a duo kind of mm -hmm. set. Yeah, that's um, right. Where did the idea come from to put your two talents together and do this? Well, I, I actually, more recently, it's been kind of fun for me to figure out different ways to perform mm -hmm. because I've spent so many years performing with lots of headliners and different bands, and I started doing some of these house concert situations. Yeah. I have a friend in Hartford, Doug Cupper, who owned the tape works, and he would open up his studio to me, and I would bring in a looper and just do a solo performance night. Mm -hmm. And I've done these a, f a few of these over the last few years, and one night I just had an idea, well, why don't I call Danny and see if he wants to come down? And that was really where this duo was born, from just an impromptu, you know, hey, let's get together and do some tunes. Right. And it was I, so refreshing. Yeah. Well, it, you know, sorry to interrupt. That's okay, no. It was so refreshing to perform as a duo. I mean, we've played with drummers and bass players, mm -hmm. and we always will, and we love that. And yeah. there's a certain allure to that. It's, you know, it's the roots, and it, right. it's a great way to perform. But to be able to perform as a duo, two guys who love to play guitar, mm -hmm. we love playing the guitar together, yeah. and there's a real energy and a real, um, you know, uh, a great chemistry there. So we have an opportunity, I have an opportunity to play with one of the guys I learned how to play listening yeah. to, because I listened to a lot of those records that Danny was recording on right and uh, we'll play on each other's songs and we just have a lot of fun yeah had you played before together we would played a couple of times mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. uh, um, in a band situation yeah. mm -hmm. but uh, the um, duo thing was 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 new to me and I'd, I'd never done that before yeah so uh, yeah. and I was certainly you know thrilled to go play with Jeff and that's sort of under those circumstances right right now what music do you choose for this sh for the show well, well uh, we, you know, I have a lot of tunes that I've written over the years yeah. uh, that I've done that I've uh, written with and, and for various people. Right. And uh, that have been recorded, and Jeff has a, a whole repertoire of stuff that he's done. Sure. So we just put together the best of what we, uh, of what we had mm -hmm. and uh, created some more loops um, and uh, just, just put a show together. Yeah, yeah. What's the story that this show tells? If a set, mm -hmm. you know, I like to think well, sometimes there's, there's, a set. I don't think the, the set tells a story, but each, each tune, we, we introduce each tune and talk a little bit about how we got there and how the tune came about. And, and uh, yeah. uh, there's, you know, every tune has a story, of For course, sure. about how it got written. Yeah. And also, you know, I know when I go to a show, mm -hmm. it's the content of the music and the energy on the stage. Are the people enjoying right. what they're doing? Yeah. And we both passionately love to play guitar, yeah. individually and together. We have a chemistry that we bring out in each other. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to think that every combination in, in the world has its own unique synergy that happens, the right. combination of the two or three or four musicians playing together. So we're enjoying this chemistry that happens because we both love to play. Yeah. We both play differently, but we both have similar influences, soul music and R&B music and mm -hmm. rock and roll. And so we've listened to a lot of the same stuff. And sure. Our ages are close enough to where we were listening to, you know, and getting influenced by a lot of the same music. That being said, Danny has some amazing songs, and yeah. it's just a joy to play these songs, you know, that we've heard on the radio, but turn them into a, a, an entirely new right. uh, experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was going to say, um, you know, what does Jeff bring to your songs? Oh, well, I mean, Jeff is such a superb musician and uh, such a wonderful guitarist that. Uh, Whatever he plays, it's, we don't have, we, ne we don't we never discuss what we're gonna do. Yeah, we just hit it, and and he knows what to do. Yeah, and he has never done anything on my tunes that was any that was anything other than excellent and perfect. So right. there's very little discussion about yeah, like yeah. You know, what parts we're gonna do. And yeah. among first class musicians, you'll find that's the case. You know, guys can either hit it or they you know or, or not. Right, right. So with Jeff, he always comes up with the right stuff. And, sure. And uh, there's there's little discussion. You know? Yeah. And and Danny. His, what he adds to, to your stuff? Oh, God. You know, again, 
I'm a product of all the music that I've listened to. Yeah. I'm a self-taught musician. Mm -hmm. I never took any lessons. Mm -hmm. So the way that I learned was I, I listened to my favorite artists. And Danny's on you know, <laughs> dozens of those records from my favorite artists. Yeah. So without him knowing it, he was giving me guitar lessons before we ever even met. And yeah. so whether it's the fact that we're, our musical influences are very similar and we're mm -hmm. attracted to the same kind of music and we love listening to old time R&B music and, and so, or that it maybe was a lick I heard him play on a James Taylor record, you know, 30 years yeah, ago. Yeah. And, oh, there's that lick. Right. I, you know, I love that music is this communication without words. It's That's just right. felt. Yeah. And so I'll play something and leave a space and he'll play the perfect answer to it. And yeah. I'm just like in heaven. You right, know, so. right. That's one of the things that kind of happens, this conversation between the two sure, instruments, which sure. is very rare for me to find. It's very rare for me to find a guitar player that I enjoy playing with as much. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like there's this invisible art that's being created by you two, as you said. You know, yep. you can hear him do something, and yep. and that what whatever he does up there might be unexpected, yes. but it it does something to the the canvas you're working on. Exactly. Um, you know, we, we I just saw Derek. And Susan, mm, uh, they're amazing. Uh, oh my God! So and 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 I got a chance to sit and talk with Derek. I, I did actually a cover story on them for the magazine. But uh, I was watching him soloing, and he had his eyes closed, and he'd smile. Yeah. And I said to him, and when we were talking, I said, Derek, what makes you smile in a solo? And he said, When I hear somebody in the band do something that I don't expect them to do, sure. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. That is oh, yeah. brilliant. Just yeah. keeping the ears right. open. Sure. And you know, it's like you're, you're a radar screen, and you're just. Yeah, feeling all the things that are going on. At yeah, the same time. yeah, and 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 as again, as I know, you know, from my talks with musicians, and you're not thinking about what mm -hmm. you're doing. Your radar is open to whatever yes. stimulus is happening up there. Yeah. How, how has time affected the the music that you play now together? When you take stuff that you've done thirty years ago, twenty years ago, even ten years ago, how has how has time affected it when you play it now? Well, you know, playing music is a learning experience, mm -hmm. and um, uh, for me, pretty much every time I play the guitar, I, I see something that was right in front of me, all along that yeah. I, you know, uh, that I didn't know was there. Yeah. And especially, I'm also inspired by Jeff by what he plays because Jeff has another way of approaching guitars different from me. And I, right. I, I always learn when I play with Jeff. Uh, uh, it's a, so music generally is a learning experience and a, and a growth experience. Right. So, uh, you know. Pe yeah, people would be so amazed to hear that. Mm -hmm. Here's this little instrument with six strings, yes. and you say, you know, he plays it in a way that inspires you. Sure. That, that, that it, you're always learning on that instrument. That's right. Um, and we're also, we're taking these songs and we're giving them a new life. I mean, Danny, yeah. nor, neither of us have performed with a looper, you know, per se, but um, I have a few um, musician friends who I've gotten in the studio with and mm -hmm. one is Steve Amity from the uh, from the Subdudes. Okay. And some of the loops that we will play with tonight yeah. include him. He's got such a beautiful mm -hmm. feeling yeah. and uh, he agreed, you know, I said, do you mind if <laughs> we can't fly you in but we yeah. can still play with you during the yeah, show? Yeah, you know? yeah. So it's, it's a wonderful opportunity to utilize technology. That's right. Now that we have technology at our That's fingertips right. and we I have a vocal harmonizer. If I decide to have a three-part harmony for one second, I could just push a button and there it is. And there it is. And wow. We want the drummer and yeah. bass player to start here and stop there. We can. Yeah. And do it just with two guys. Yeah. It's really fun. That's great. It'll yeah. never replace playing with a bass player and drummer. It's just a different yeah. approach. Yeah. Right. Well, Danny, I know you grew up in the in the early '60s musically, right. um, and and here you're talking yeah. about all this technology that's available mm -hmm. today. Yeah. But when you grew up, and, and I grew up about the same time down in Jersey, it was all I think fly by the seat of their pants, wasn't it? Sure. I mean, it was a, a time of of experimental music, uh, people trying different things. What were some of the things you were exposed to in the city? In the would it, would it have been the early '60s? Well, it's the uh, early to mid '60s mm -hmm. when I was uh, going to high school and then going into the city every yeah. chance I got, and yeah. just every kind of music you could imagine. It was such an incredible period of, of, of growth and experimentation in music, and uh, a, a confluence of different kinds of music. Folk music was huge then. Yeah. Yeah. Jazz was in a great period then. Right. Um, hard bop and, and um, kind of soul jazz was exploding at that mm -hmm. point. Um, uh, rock and roll, obviously. So, well, not so much rock and roll. That was a little bit later. Rock and roll went through a period where it was the greatest stuff in the world, yeah. and then it kind of got killed by the establishment. And then the Beatles rekindled it and exploded again yeah. around 1963, 64. But uh, 
uh, R and B was absolutely at, at uh, soul music was was exploding then and was so beautiful. That's right. And so all this stuff was available in in New York City. Yeah. And I used to go down to the Village and and um, I think as I said earlier, yeah. one night, me and my buddies, we saw Cecil Taylor with Eric Dolphy, and then walked down the street and saw Dave Van Romp. Yeah. <laughs> and then the ne uh, a week later, I went and saw Lightning Hopkins at the wow. Village Gate. Yeah. yeah. And then we went up to the Apollo Theater and went to see James Brown and Otis Redding yes. and, and Jackie Wilson, yeah. just everyone you can imagine. It was Amazing. all happening right in the city. Yeah. That was the Renaissance. That's I mean, right. It was a Renaissance. Was. Yeah. Right. Uh, an explosion of music and, yeah. and um, culture and everything. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. So I was yeah. amazingly lucky to have uh, uh, to be to have come up in that period when yeah. all these things were happening and of course I was influenced by all. Yeah. Were you playing guitar then? Yes. Um, and I know I know what Jeff said he was he's a self-taught musician. Mm -hmm. Were you self-taught also or uh, I, no, I had studied guitar from okay. the time I was about 10 years old okay. until about 18 yeah. and I studied theory privately a little bit and uh, uh, for a while I studied classical guitar. Yeah. Um, but really, ultimately, yes, I'm self-taught like Jeff. Yeah. Really, yeah. I learned by ear, by listening, uh, just as he did, right. to what was going on and then doing my own version or interpretation of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah.